So, uh, so far, I think that you have enough motivation that why machine learning, and in particular reinforcement learning, can be helpful in solving combinatorial optimization problems. Thank you, for uh, Elias, for your great presentation and giving a lot of examples, uh, which makes my life easier. So I will directly go to a particular example that I worked on uh, in solving the vehicle routing problem. Uh, this work published in NORIPS 2018, and uh, this is a joint work with my collaborators at Lehigh University. Uh, so uh, uh, here is the outline of the problem that I'm going to talk about. Uh, first, I will give a little bit of motivation about why we are interested in this problem. I will give a brief background on uh, what's the uh, current state of art solutions and also machine learning solutions for the solving the VRP. And then I will introduce our framework, which I call it set to sequence uh, framework. And then we, I will present some numerical examples and uh, conclusions. Uh, so our goal in this work is to uh, use machine learning and reinforcement learning for solving vehicle routing problem. Uh, uh, so in this approach, we are trying to treat this problem very differently from the classical heuristics and methods that are have been proposed for a few decades. And uh, this is a well-established problem, as I said in the first round. I don't know where, which uh, sentence I have said. Uh, so, uh, and uh, possibly if it works well, we are going to use this in other combinatorial optimization problems. But uh, here, the motivation arises from the stochastic elements that we see in the world. Uh, so, for example, uh, these are the problems that nowadays, in the especially in the last year, we have seen a lot. Uh, there are typically very delays of the providers, the transportation times are very stochastic, and uh, the, there are many uh, highs and downs in the demands. So there are some unexpected uh, spikes in the demands, uh, which can be caused by temperature, wind speed, they have weak season of the year, and also uh, if there is a pandemic or not. So uh, these are the problems that uh, many companies, especially the ones that are working on transportation, are dealing every year. And um, to solve uh, the stochasticity, they uh, they just make some simplifying assumptions, like uh, they assume that the distributions are normal for travel times and demands. And of course, as we all know, they, they are not following normal distributions. They are uh, usually having some kind of weird non-stationary uh, distribution, and uh, they have some kind of multi-modal distribution for travel times and demands. So uh, the, our goal is to use somehow the historical data that we have gathered uh, in, the, in the companies and probably by fitting or not fitting it uh, into a, some predetermined uh, format of the distribution. We want to use this historical data. And uh, the first approach which comes to mind, which is good at uh, data-driven approaches is uh, machine learning methods and reinforcement learning methods. And in this work, uh, we are interested to see if machine learning and reinforcement learning can help us to uh, solve the vehicle routing problem. Uh, let's start with the simplest vehicle routing problem. In this uh, version of the vehicle routing, uh, there is a single depot, there are multiple customers, there you see a visual in the right hand side. And the objective is to find a set of routes, all beginning and ending in the depot. Uh, so there is a one vehicle or multiple vehicles that are filling in the depot. They are satisfying the demand of a bunch of customers and then they come back to depot to refill. And uh, compared to a uh, travel salesman problem, which nowadays we can solve very large problems with a couple uh, thousand pro nodes, the vehicle routing is uh, considered to be very much harder, way harder. And uh, the largest instances of this problem that we can solve even on the simplest forms is uh, limited to couple hundred prob uh, customers. So this, uh, in terms of the uh, complexity of the problem, um, 
I would say that even the classical uh, and also heuristics have very hard time on finding good solutions for this combinatorial optimization problem. There are generally two approaches for solving this problem. The first approach is the MIP approach, and you can model this as a uh, mixed integer. Uh, but uh, this problem is very hard because there is exponential number of the uh, um, uh, uh, constraints arising as a result of dependence on the customer numbers. So if you increase the number of the customers, the problem becomes exponentially complicated. This is, there are several ways to relax this assumption, but uh, it is very hard uh, even with uh, uh, the latest developments in the MIP formula. And the second approach is the MDP approach, which is which was uh, used to be less interesting, but uh, it's uh, starting to have uh, grow interest. And also um, in this approach, uh, the, we treat the problem a little bit differently. So instead of solving the MIP uh, problem, now we are looking for the permutations of the customers and the depot. Uh, which are attaining the objective that we're looking for. And uh, when we are talking about permutations, the simplest thing that uh, this uh, comes to mind is the Markov decision formulation, which can be solved with dynamic programming. But of course, uh, we are having the curse of dimensionality and it usually takes a long time uh, to solve these kind of problems. Um, these are several works that I, uh, I would say that they are, uh, they are one of the, they are very uh, good works that it started the idea of using uh, machine learning for uh, re uh, computer optimization problems. This The first work is the pointer network in 2015, which trained the, the TSP in supervised fashion from the optimal solutions. And there was an extension of this work which added the uh, reinforcement learning to pointer uh, networks. And uh, the limitation that this work addressed that uh, they argued that there is no ground truth labels available in the combinatorial optimizations because if we know the optimal solution, so we can solve them. But uh, the problem is we typically don't know what are the optimalities. And if we use the heuristics or other kind of preliminary solutions as the labels of our work, uh, our uh, training and supervised uh, version, um, they are not gonna achieve anything comparable to optimal solution. So they introduced uh, a policy grading algorithm combined with pointer network, which was solving close to optimality, uh, the TSP problem, and uh, other combinatorial optimization problems. And other work is directly related to the second work. And uh, we generalize this framework uh, to solve uh, VRP with the uh, same RL and uh, I would say pointer type network. Uh, so here is the uh, some wish list that we require from the trained algorithm to have. Uh, so when we, we say algorithm is uh, comparable with the other approaches, I listed five um, different criteria for us, which if we have, we uh, could argue that uh, our uh, solution is uh, comparable to others. First is, of course, the solution quality. Uh, the uh, routes that we are generating should be comparable to existing heuristics, definitely, and it should be close to optimality as uh, much as possible. The second one is um, it should be fast. Um, so if you, you generate a, a solution if, or train a solver which takes days to train and also generate solutions, it's not gonna replace the existing solutions because they are working in the uh, scale of the minutes and uh, they can provide reliable solutions in minutes. So uh, we need it to be fast. So we needed to solve the problem in the scale of seconds. It should generalize well to unseen problems. General, so for example, if you change the distribution of the problem uh, a little bit, uh, it should generalize. It should be safe. 
here, uh, our definition of the safety uh, is a little bit loose, but um, what do I mean by safety it means that um, we need the instance to work well uh, on almost all instances generated from the same uh, distribution. And of course, we want no hand engineering and uh, tr training is done uh, with no hand, hand engineering. Here's the overview of the um, uh, thing that uh, the, the approach that we're interested in. Elias give us some uh, overview. I have, I have another illustration. Uh, so instead of uh, solving uh, one problem, we are interested in solving a bunch of problems all using a black box solver. So let's say in this example, we have two different uh two very different problems and we would like to train a black box solver in uh, which can solve this problem and this problem to close the optimality and um so this is what is called learning to learn algorithms and once we have such a, a trained black box solver we can use it to uh, generate the solutions almost instantaneously so how does it work? So for example, uh, that this is the training policy and this, uh, we are presenting a reinforcement learning seminar. So I assume that everybody knows uh, the policy gradient algorithms, but here is the uh, general procedure. Let's say we have a bunch of problems, then uh, we feed it to a black box solver and it generates us some random routes. For example, when uh, this is in initiated with uh, random initial weights, it generates completely random routes. So we are, what we are interested, we are interested to increase the probability of good routes and also decrease the probability of bad routes. So after a little bit training, uh, the generated routes will be something like this, which is a little bit uh, optimal, but it has some weird, uh, behaviors and after a well-trained uh, model is available, we are expecting to see uh, routes which are close to optimal. Uh, I will use a very simple example of the vehicle routing to demonstrate how our uh, set to sequence framework works. So uh, this is an example. We have a depot at the center and there are four customers and the numbers are associated with the demands of the customers. And there is a single truck with capacity 10. Um, if you are, uh, if you think uh, uh, just a few seconds, you can easily see that the optimal solution is to satisfy the demand of this customer in one route and all these three customers in a separate route. So this is a pretty uh, easy um, example, but uh, I just, I would like to use this simple example to illustrate how our method works and we will see much complicated examples in the numerical sections. So uh, we have a set of uh, locations. These are the locations of the customers and the location of the depot and we have the demands. And uh, we start from a depot and uh, the location of the depot is um, stored in a latent memory, which is this latent memory is usually the hidden cell of the uh, some LSTM cell. And uh, we embed this into our LSTM cell, which is capturing our sequence that we would like to generate on the right hand side. Then uh, First, we start with depot and then somehow generate a probability distribution over the next possible steps that we can go. For example, the, in this illustration, it says that first go to uh, location of the customer number one, and uh, then it goes to location of the customer num uh, number one, and uh, this sequence continues to grow. It uses the information of the previous steps plus the new location and encodes it into a, some late, another latent memory and produces another uh, probability distribution. Here it says go to five, which is the depot. And the generation of the permutation grows as you see. Uh, we repeat this process until we have the solution and the remain demand for the old customers is zero. 
And if you look at the right hand side, uh, this uh, sequence that we already generated um, is optimal given that uh, the probability distributions that we generate here are optimal. So our objective is to generate the optimal probability distributions that are generating this sequence. Okay, so how to generate those probability distributions? Um, uh, generating the probability distributions is pretty classic, uh, and uh, there it's usually used in text translation context. Uh, so the uh, method that we use is very similar to text translation for generating. So in the text translation, you are interested in generating some probability distribution on your dictionary. And here we are interested in probability distribution over the locations of the customers and depot. The only difference is that uh, unlike the text translation, uh, the elements that we are dealing here are uh, dynamic. So the demands are changing over time. So we need to somehow modify the attention mechanism which are producing those probabilities to handle the dynamic elements. And uh, we did this uh, by using the demands only in the attention mechanism. This is a slight modification that we did uh, compared to previous works. And uh, so it, the interpretation, the visual interpretation is that uh, when we are generating, attending to different nodes, uh, we are only considering the dynamic elements, but when generating the sequence and considering the sequence information, we get rid of those information, uh, the demand information. So the, um, first we uh, embed this into some uh, fixed length embeddings. This is something like word to vec embedding. Then uh, we also have the embedding of the uh, depot and we use this uh, embedding informations of the uh, set and also the decoder to generate a attention uh, vector. So for example, this AT tells the importance of each of these uh, six loca uh, five locations uh, at the current point of the decoding process. And we use this to compute uh, uh, another vector which is called context. And the context vector, uh, uses the information of the this, uh, embeddings again to produce our final probability distribution. In this example, for example, uh, it says with probability 0 0.8, uh, after depot go to uh, location number one. And uh, what we expect on the uh, optimal solution is that this probability should be deterministic. This is kind of um, matching with the idea of the policy gradient algorithms that we're expecting the optimal uh, policy to be uh, deterministic. Okay, uh, so far I've introduced the framework. Let's see uh, the mapping of the vehicle routing problem to, vehicle, uh, to the RL context. Uh, it is very straightforward. Uh, the state action reward is straightforward. This, uh, the state spaces, as I explained, is the locations and the demands action spaces, the nodes that we can visit on the next step, the reward is the tour line. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, uh, we have a we need to somehow guarantee the feasibility of the solution. And for that, uh, we are using uh, masking. For example, it's, if uh, there is a zero demand remain for a particular customer, we uh, set the luck likelihood of visiting that customer in the next uh, time step to a very small number close to negative infinity. So the probability of visiting that is very small. And uh, uh, determination criteria is that uh, when we stop, uh, there is no demand left. Uh, a few examples, experiments that we did, uh, we generated vehicle routing problems with uh, uh, different sizes uh, of the customers and we only have one depot. And the demands are chosen uh, randomly from uh, one to nine. Here are some examples, comparisons of our reinforcement learning method with Clark Wright. 
uh, heuristic and uh, other heuristics, and we compared uh, their, our solution with OR tools, which is uh, a combination of heuristic and meta heuristic methods, uh, which is one of the best solvers, open source solvers uh, that are providing the heuristic methods. And uh, in, t in terms of the VRP with 10 customers and VRP uh, with 20 customers, we see that when using Beam Search Decoder, we are almost comparable with the uh, OR tools and and also in the other cases, for example, we are um, doing better in more than 90% of cases, better than all traditional heuristics, and uh, on 60% of the test instances, the test uh, instances were performing better than OR tools in the VRP with 50 and 100 customers. Another interesting point that we observe is, uh, unlike the heuristics and uh, thread, uh, OR tools, uh, our uh, problem complexity in terms of the solution time doesn't increase exponentially. This figure is very interesting observation that we made. So if you, uh, for example, double the size of the customers from 50 to 100, uh, the time uh, ratio of the uh, to the customer nodes stays fixed. But uh, this is not true in the heuristics and also MIP approaches, which is growing exponentially. This is a good uh, uh, motivation that um, we can probably solve way larger problems with almost same time, uh, with with linear increase in time. And another uh, thing that we observed uh, is that we can, unlike the traditional methods, we can use uh, the batching of the reinforcement, uh, the machine learning. So uh, unlike reinforcement learning, unlike uh, classical methods, we can solve batches of the problems all at once. So if we solve, for example, all uh, 1,000 of our test instances at the same time, we can speed up the process 100 times. So uh, this means that we can solve 1,000 vehicle routing problems in uh, one second with size 100 on GPU, which is uh, very fast and also uh, shows the scalability of this approach. Here is the illustration of the decoding and training model. On the right hand side, on the left hand side, you see the problem, and on the right hand side, you see a, a visualization of the attention. The uh, white areas are showing the regions that if customer located in these areas, we will visit it with probability one, and we will never visit the uh, shaded areas. So here is the step that we I have stopped. The current remaining demand is eight. There are six. Uh, we uh, satisfied the demand of this customer with six, and there are one another customer with demand six. So if you are a human, probably you say before visiting the depot, I can satisfy the demand six here, and then we uh, go to depot. But uh, the our visualization visualization and train model somehow thinks that. This is not the optimal thing to do. And uh, it uh, goes this. Uh, I don't know. There is something wrong with visualization. And it uh, continues going to depot. And after that, uh, it starts another tour. So it figures out that if. Uh, it starts a new tar, it is uh, attaining the optimal solution uh, way faster. Uh, it attains a better uh, solution, which is actually the optimal solution in this case. A uh, few, few uh, other examples that we make. Uh, this uh, slide shows that um, using the more interesting uh, decoders like beam search decoder can help over greedy decoder. The greedy decoder is the one that we chose the next node as uh, the node with the highest probability. But uh, beam search decoder uh, keeps track of multiple beams with the highest probability and then chooses the one which, which attains the uh, shorter route. Here you see that uh, the 
there is a slight improvement in the solution quality. And uh, here is another example that shows Beam Search Decoder fixes some of the uh, behaviors that we have observed, which are definitely not optimal. So, uh, and also another interesting property that we can attain is uh, demand sharing. And um, as you see here, um, the trained learned model somehow, uh, because we have not restricted, learns that if it places this particular customer in two separate routes, uh, it is attaining better solution. And this kind of prob uh, properties are desirable in real world, but uh, they're uh, uh, relatively hard to achieve using the classical methods. And, uh, but in, uh, our MTP uh, reinforcement learning approach, these are uh, found automatically, these patterns. Uh, because I'm running out of time, I will uh, going to skip the stochastic example, but um, the details, but here we used another uh, reinforcement learning and it showed that uh, our, uh, on the, case that we the locations of the customers and demands are stochastic. Um, we are doing better uh, than the other uh, baselines. And uh, we are we can satisfy more demands in limited time compared to uh, some trivial baselines. Uh, in conclusion, uh, I just want to wrap up everything that uh, we just saw a very simple framework in this work, uh, which uses a very simple embedding, very simple um, attention model, uh, which attains close to optimality solution in our vehicle routing problem. In the next uh, work that uh, Water is presenting, he is going to uh, present a more intelligent uh, attention, which improves the solution quality. And the point is that um, this method is uh, pretty much uh, robust to the changes of the problem. So uh, this makes this appealing. So um, uh, the thing that you can solve uh, uh, your daily uh, problems close to optimality in the scale of the seconds, and you can solve many of them in parallel, uh, makes uh, MDP type approaches very competitive. Uh, with the state of art solvers, they are not uh, still, there's no guarantee that they are better than the MIP solvers yet, uh, because um, there is some, uh, there needs to be some improvements, but um, in the future work, we are also would like to uh, increase uh, this, to vehicle routing with constraints and also solve larger problems. And uh, of course, there have been several works recently uh, which are solving larger problems and uh, trying more advanced embeddings. And uh, there's another interesting direction which I want to point out here is the, this problem is very interesting in terms of the uh, multi-agent setting, um, which can be modeled with, uh, uh, graph embeddings as well, and also considering other competitor optimization is also with this framework is another interesting uh, direction to follow. And um, here is the link for our code and paper, and thank you for your attention. I'm happy to ask, happy to answer a few questions if you have any. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, it, apparently, for you, it's even earlier uh, than for Elias, so that's real. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that commitment. Yeah, mine started at 6 a.m. Wow. Uh, thanks. Yeah, so, this is good to wake up early. <laughs> uh, you, uh, is there, uh, there's one thing about the problem formulation that I didn't fully uh, understand. Is there uh, some intrinsic value to going back to the depot? Like, is it... Uh, uh, is, it, uh, is there something lost by not going back to the depot? Um, so you need to go back to the repo to refill. So if you don't have the enough capacity, uh, enough okay, items left, you can yeah, yeah, yeah. This problem That's is capacitated, yeah. Then it makes sense. Okay, but do people, anyone else?
Any questions? And so maybe I have a question or maybe it's more like a comment. But first of all, a nice presentation. So I will also follow up on this uh, this next. But um, when you speak about like the advantage that you can solve all these uh, this solutions in parallel, I think that also holds for a lot of the like the solutions you compare to, right? Like for the savings heuristic, I can imagine you could implement this in parallel. Um, like your method. Actually, um, when I say in parallel, um, I particularly mean in GPU, which is pretty good for uh, scaling the, mm, in terms of the vector uh, uh, batch, uh, I would say the batch uh, solution. So what I did, uh, I added a batch dimension to problem mm -hmm. and uh, I used the capability of the uh, GPUs to, uh, which are good at uh, yeah, so I think that's an advantage. Like we're sort of used to doing that, right? For yeah. Deep learning. I don't think I haven't <laughs> seen anybody implementing heuristics on GPU. So. Yeah, but if like like Elias, I think also said like we put a certain structure. I think on the problem like here, this is constructive procedure where one by one we add the nodes, and we could also like consider maybe an insertion uh, heuristic. Um, but uh, I, I think that's what some of the baselines you consider are, but these are parallelizable, I think, in pretty much the same manner. So I'm not completely sure if it's fair to say, like, this method has the advantage that you can parallelize it in that way. I think that holds for a lot of other heuristics as well, that you can parallelize them. Where it's true that maybe people don't do that uh, typically, but uh, I think it would be fair to mention that, uh, that yeah. as well. Yeah, um, the point is that, um this uh, extension is uh, something that you achieve for free. So, because uh, the way you implement reinforcement learning, you have always a batch dimension. Yeah. So you can pass 1000 uh, problems at the same time to the decoder and generate the solutions at no cost. So implementation is free, I would say. Okay. So, but the, for the heuristics, I don't believe that it's free. You need to implement it. In oh, yeah. that's, that's definitely true, yes. Yeah. But but the, if I may follow up, I mean, the trade-off would be for the other uh, classical heuristics, you can massively parallelize them on CPUs, and CPUs are much cheaper than GPUs. So if you have a, like a standard server with 64 cores, you can run six, you know, 64 instances in parallel very easy, even if the instance is quite large. If you have a couple hundred gigs of RAM, you can probably solve like a million city-scale VRP. Whereas in the GPU, you'll hit the memory limit much sooner um, and not be able to buy This is also something I've struggled with. Like, how do you compare CPUs and GPUs in yeah. the first place, right? Do you do it in like terms of flops or number of computation or like cost of the machine? Or it, it's a hard problem, I think, anyway. But I think we should be careful in making these type of claims where we say like this is much more advantageous because I think. Well, these other algorithms, they can be parallelized. Well, especially like um, the ones you yeah. against pretty trivially as well. I guess, so. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not making such claim that others are not parallelizable. Of course, they are. But, well, uh, yeah, like that's the yeah, yeah that, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so all I'm saying is that we can solve um, uh, these problems at GPU very easily, and we always uh, have this implementation for free. But uh, yes, definitely we can use uh, uh, some multiprocessing to solve the heuristics and uh, how, whatever uh, what, uh, number of the parallel threads that we are starting. So that's possible. Uh, but uh, here's the point. Uh, you um, in the ex Let's go back to 